Hey everyone, Nick Diabertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be talking about list comprehensions in Python. And this is part of our lecture series on exploring the parameter space. And this section of the lecture series is covering some additional Python basics that we need to be able to go implement sensitivity analysis in Python. So we um, are picking up here in the lecture from how to do list comprehensions in Python in the extra Python basics section. And so list comprehensions are not necessary at all. They're something that uh, we call syntactic sugar, which means that it's something which makes things easier for you, though it's not strictly necessary. It's a feature of the language that makes writing the code sweeter, um, even though it is completely possible to do it in a different way already. It didn't actually extend the functionality of the language. It just makes it easier to do certain things. So what a list comprehension basically does is it lets you do a for loop and create a list all in a single line. So we've seen many times already in the course, and it's a very, very common pattern in programming to go through a loop. And for each run of the loop, you're going to uh, do some kind of processing and create some kind of output, and then put that output into the list. And you're going to have one output into the list for each run of the loop. Um, this comes up all the time. And so you can see in the first block here how we know to do that right now. And that's you first set up your output list before you start the loop. Then you have your loop. And then within your loop, you append to that list so that you finally have all those results in a list. So list comprehension lets you take these three lines and put it into one single line. So here is the same exact loop with list comprehension. And you can see that actually the loop statement itself for I in range five, that comes over 100% the same into the list comprehension. And when you look at this, the one other part that actually matters in here that's not just boilerplate of setting this all up is the actual computation part. We're adding 10 to whatever the input value is. And so that's the other part which comes over into the list comprehension. So it's really minimized it down to just the things that we care about and not having to write all this other structure. So it's whatever your output calculation is and then your loop statement. And you just wrap that in brackets and that's a list comprehension. And I think this is nice and readable as well. This is just saying, you know, add 10 to each one of the inputs in the range up to five uh, and make that into a list. So I think it increases the readability on top of just making it easier and faster to write the code. So a lot of advantages here with list comprehension. If this feels overwhelming to you, don't worry about it. You can still write these loops just fine. Your code is going to function exactly the same. It's just, in my opinion, a lot easier to write with list comprehensions than doing this full on pattern. Now you don't want to abuse list comprehensions. If you've got a complicated loop, you probably don't want to make that into a list comprehension. It's just going to become a really, really complicated one line statement. Uh, but when you're doing simple things, then a list comprehension makes a lot of sense. So now let's go over and look at some examples of this and apply it in the Jupyter Notebook. So still working on this additional Python basics, dictionaries, list comprehensions, notebook, now in the list comprehensions section. So first here, I'm just showing the standard way that we've learned so far. 
we've got an inputs list. We want to add five to each of those inputs. That's our calculation. The calculation could be absolutely anything that you want. It could be running your entire model or whatever. Here, we're just adding five. And so we get five added to each of these inputs as the output. And again, that's setting up our empty list, doing the loop statement, doing the calculation, appending that result, and then we have all that. And now it becomes one line. Uh, just adding five to each of the inputs, for each of the inputs, and we're done. So much easier, in my opinion. Um, and like I said, uh, this is a really trivial example here. We're just adding five. It was really simple. But you can do anything you want with the logic. Um, and if you use functions, you can really do a whole lot here because you can put all your complex logic into a function. And then what the loop itself becomes simple. And so you can condense the loop into a list comprehension. Uh, without the function, this would be a lot of logic to try and cram into a list comprehension. But with the function, it becomes very simple. So all this function is doing is uh, taking a numeric value. If it's less than two, it returns low. Uh, if it's between two and three, it returns mid. And otherwise, it returns high. So with the original way that we've learned, the list building pattern, um, it basically looks the same as the last loop. Um, but instead of adding five, now we're calling the function here and we're passing in the input and getting the output as a result of that and appending that in the list. So for our inputs, um, which were one, two, three, one is low, two is mid and three is high. And with list comprehension, we can still make this into a single line. Um, so you can really do very powerful things. If you take your complicated logic and you wrap it in a function, then doing a loop with that function across a bunch of different inputs, collecting all those results into a list becomes a single line now, so much easier than before. Um, and so that's the basics of list comprehensions. And the majority of the time, that's all you'll ever need. Uh, there are more advanced ways to use them as well. Let's just kind of quickly go over those. Um, so we can do conditionals in the uh, list comprehensions as well. And that's conditional around whether to append, whether to add the output to the final list. So here again, we're looking at one, two, three. And if the input's less than three, then we're gonna add it to the list. And so we get one and two out of that. And then looking at the list comprehension. So you know, here's the basic uh, list comprehension, which gets us just the original inputs back. And then we add our condition onto that. And it's going to uh, give us only the inputs which satisfy the condition in the final resulting list. Um, and you can do those same calculations on the inputs as well. Um, so here it, it kept the one and the two, uh, but now it's adding five to it as well. Um, so that's conditional for whether to include the value in the resulting list. You can also do a conditional on the value itself. So here is our long form loop where if the input's less than three, we're going to append it. And otherwise, it's too high, we're going to append too high to the list. Um, and so here we run that. Um, and we're going to get uh, one, two, and two high because three is not less than three. And we can do all this in one line with a list comprehension. So when you're doing a conditional on the value, then that conditional comes onto the left side of the list comprehension, whereas here for conditional on whether to keep the value was on the right side of the list comprehension. And so here 
we're going to do um, we're going to do the input if the input is less than three. Otherwise, we're going to get too high. So this is an inline if else statement. Input if it's less than three. Otherwise, too high. And we're doing that for each of the inputs. And so that's how we get the same result as this longer form loop. Um, and you can combine all three of those elements if you'd like. Though by the time you're doing that, it, it's starting to get a little bit hard to read, honestly. So um, it may at this point be better just to go back to a long form loop now that you've got multiple things going on. But you can combine all these elements if you want to. Um, and then just a quick mention for um, there are comprehensions for other data types in Pythons. Uh, we haven't even talked about sets and, and generators as data types. We're not really going to go there in this course. They're not really necessary for what we're doing. Uh, but for those and as well as dictionaries, you can do dictionary comprehensions as well. Um, but that's a little bit more advanced. You can check out uh, this resource for more information on that if you're interested. Um, and then that wraps up the material on list comprehension. And there are lab exercises on this as well. And I forgot to mention at the end of the dictionaries video that there are also lab exercises for that in the same notebook. So just go through that whole um, Jupyter Notebook, the Dix and List Comprehension Lab, and just complete all the exercises in both the Dictionaries and List Comprehensions sections for the lab exercise. So we're going to come back in the next video to talk about the Python import system and how to install packages. So thanks for listening and see you next time.